Hi everybody, um, it's Jesse from Local Matters. How you doing? Um, I run the Growing Matters program at Local Matters. Um, and we basically help to connect people to growing their own food. So through learning gardens, uh, community gardens, workshops, and uh, today we're gonna be doing some gardening videos. We're gonna start doing this every week for a while uh, because everybody's stuck at home. And I know people right now really wanna grow their own food. It's become uh, much more important uh, considering the times we're in. All right, um, so today we're gonna start seeds and uh, one of the most important things you can think of when you're starting seeds is uh, planting dates. So planting dates for cold season crops, which is what we're going to mess with today, um, is early to mid-April. Um, so the cold season crops are things like collard greens, kale, mustard greens, peas, carrots, beets. There's all sorts of great stuff that tastes really good in the cold weather. When you grow it in the cold weather, that is. Um, so... Um, we're a little bit behind. It's March 26th today. It'd probably be better if we'd started our seeds a couple weeks ago, but that's okay. There's some flexibility there um, because basically when you're talking about starting seeds, you go like a month back from the planting date. Um, so in about a month, our seeds will be ready to put in the ground. Um, there are also seeds that you can put in the ground here real soon just directly. They call those direct sown or direct sow. Um, things like peas, um, or beets or carrots are probably better to be put directly into the ground, okay? Now, you're gonna need a couple things to do this. You're gonna need a seed tray like this. You're gonna need the cells that go in it. These come in different sizes and shapes. This one is, um, I haven't counted, I think maybe a 72, so it's quite a few plants. Um, and then you're gonna need a humidity dome to put on top of it when you're done, okay? Um, you're also going to need a bucket and you'll need some seed starting mix, of course. I'm using Pro Mix today, but there's lots of good uh, seed starting mixes out there. You're going to want to put it in the bucket and add some moisture to it. Put some water in there. Um, I've already done that step. Um, one of the tricky things with gardening is watering, right? How much water, how moist do you want it? Um, with seed starting mix like this, you just want it moist. You want it uh, moist like a wrung out sponge is how you want to do it, okay? So you want it to be able to hold shape in your hand, but not too wet, not sopping wet. So once you do that, you can start putting it in the seed tray. You can use a hand trowel if you'd like, or I'll probably just use my hands and put it in like so, okay? And it's a little messy, so I don't know if you wanna do it outside or inside and put something on your table so that you don't get a mess everywhere. I'm opting to do it outside today because the weather's gorgeous and uh, I'm just excited to be outside. So while I'm doing this, um, we can also start seeds for the hot season crops. Um, the planting date for warm season stuff is around Mother's Day, as you probably already know. Um, and we're in zone 5B, just by the way Central Ohio is. So that means cold season crops are around um, early to mid-April and the hot stuff is like mid-May but this year is like unreasonably warm so you could probably get away with doing stuff a little early but there's no guarantees right all right so we've almost got all the seed starting mix in here and then I'm gonna bring in my super cool assistant Dylan to help me Dylan you want to come help you want to do some seeds with me Awesome. Come on over here and get on this green chair for me. All right. So we have seed starting mix in here and we're going to do we're going to do kale and collards and mustard greens. And these seeds are really tiny. So we're going to take a couple and we're going to put two in each of these little spots here. You see this, Dylan? Yeah. Want to say hi to everybody? Hi. <laughs> Very cool. All right. So we're going to take some seeds and we're going to put them in here. We're going to try to do about a third of kale, a third of collards, and a third of mustards, okay? Okay. All right. You do some and I'll do some. I'm gonna take these, let's put them over here, okay? There you go. And this isn't an exact science, right? You just put a couple. Keep them, try to keep them over here, okay, D? All right. It's a little bit on the tedious side. Try to get two in there. If you get more, that's fine.
And so, <laughs> as you can see, Dylan's spreading them out all over the seat tray, and that's okay. Dylan, can you try to keep them over here on this side? And that's fine, that'll happen. And one of the cool things about, you know, starting to garden is that before long, you guys hear my neighbors screaming, the little girls screaming over there. They're having fun. Um, so one of the cool things about gardening is you start to get good at recognizing at plant recognition. So, you know, the first time you start seeds, you won't necessarily recognize what the sprout is. But then by like the second or third time you see it, you can go, oh yeah, that's mustard greens and that's kale. And everybody's super impressed. It's really fun. So what you want to do after you put the seeds in, what I do is I take a pocket knife or a, a pen, these super high-tech gardening tools. <laughs> that was a little joke. And just basically put the seed under the soil just a little. A basic rule of thumb is that um, the smaller the seed, the more shallow you plant it, okay? Now some people will tell you to put soil over the seed, and that's fine too. You just don't want to put a lot. I tend to just do it this way, and you can do it the other way if you'd like, okay? So you go through and do that. Dylan, you want to do some more seeds? Yeah. Okay. See, our mustard greens spilled, which is fine. Let's take some mustard greens. The mustard greens are a little smaller than the collars that we just did. If you're you know, if you end up doing this at home, so take these and put these over here. Do you see this? Yeah. Put those over there, okay? Yeah. Put like two or three in each spot. Sound good? And I will do the, what? What did I start with? Collars? I'm, now I'm all confused as to what I did. But that's okay. I think I did collars first, and these are kale. Yeah, that's what it is. All right, I'm going to put the kale in the middle here. And like you notice, we got them a little mixed up, and that's fine, because you'll be able to tell in the end what it is. They start, the leaves start becoming pretty distinct after a while. They start off kind of looking the same, as little protein leaves called cotyledon leaves, and then after a while, you'll start to see their true leaves, and they'll become more distinct. All right? Okay. So now that we've put all our seeds in here, and once you've going through the step of taking a pen or a knife and putting them all under, making sure they're a little bit under. You're gonna go ahead and put, Dylan, you wanna hand that to me? You're gonna put your humidity dome on top and the purpose of this is exactly what it sounds like is to keep the humidity and the moisture inside because the most important thing is keeping your seeds wet, keeping them a little bit moist for the next week or so until they sprout, okay? Um, so when you water these, another trick here that people are always surprised by is you don't want to water over it because then you can disturb the seedlings. What you want to do is just pull, pull one section out. Some of them are a whole section, some of them are a bunch of sections. This one happens to be four. Pull it out and just put like an inch or two of water in here. Put it back in, put the dome back on. And once you see sprouts, you're going to want to go ahead and um, take the dome off because you don't want to deal with um, like mold issues. So you're going to want to take it off, and then you're going to have to pay closer attention, hey bud, closer attention to uh, the moisture because it'll start evaporating, right? Okay. Um, so good luck with your planting. Feel free and message us with questions, and um, see you next week. Thank you so much.